so Tipperary had a fairly comfortable victory against Antrim, 428 to 216 up in Corrigan Park. Tipperary scored 15 goals in five league games. You have to obviously put the caveat in that it is the weaker side of the league. There's no question about it. There's more winnable games there. So Tipperary finished top of Division 1 Group B on 10 points, a scoring differential of plus 59, which is the best across the two top divisions. Kilkenny next on eight points. Watford and Dublin, they finished on five, which was two wins a draw and two losses each. Antrim with two because they won the crucial game against Leash. And then Leash uh, finished bottom of the table there. But Tipperary, five from five. Uh, the, the players scoring the goals here were uh, Sean Ryan. He got one three. Mark Kyo, Connor Bowe, they both got a goal. And so did Podge Campion. So there was a lot of different scores for Tipperary here. Gerard O'Connor staying on the freeze. I presume he's going to be on them for the championship now. I'd say so, yeah. Um, but, well, maybe Jason Ford will be, actually, if they're both out on the field. But um, that, that's that's impressive from Tipperary because some people were talking about this could be a tricky one for Tipperary. And I was more like, I think Tipperary are going to go out and produce the same stuff again. I didn't expect to win by quite this much. And Antrim, you know, they're obviously trying things out at this stage because they had their win in the big one. But that's that's impressive stuff for Tipperary to put up that sort of a score. Yeah, uh, one thing that definitely stands out is John McGrath, seven points, one free, six from play. Um, good sign that he's kind of coming back to himself as well. And another, he's a different type of option. You In a forward line, you want different types of players, different types of options. He offers something different, be it in the half line or in the inside line as well. The goal he set up for Conor Bow the last day where he drew a man, drew two men in. Sorry, was that for Jake Morris? Yeah, J Jake Morris's third one. And drew two men in and popped it into Morris in space. Like, it was brilliant. Maybe the defenders shouldn't have bought it, but, you know, he's the sort of player who you're not surprised if he does it. No, no. And it just, it's good to see him coming back. Um... Uh, I don't think the Bonner, I'm not sure if the Bonner played, but the Bonner, it looks like he's back to form again. Like, I, I'd say he's, like he's in a good form in the last couple of games as he's been in in the last five years, I'd say. And yeah, he's he didn't play. different again. He, like, he off, just as well, just that kind of, the worker be in around there. But he's getting on the scoreboard now and he's probably maybe even setting up even more scores than he has in, in recent years. But there's a lot of signs of, like, i put it to you this way, there's very few lads not in form. There's a lot of lads showing really, really good form, and that's a really good sign of whatever they're doing during the week, and they're bringing it to the match, uh, bringing it to match days at the weekend. Yeah, so for Antrim, Conal Cunning, he scored five points, one of those from play. Nigel Elliott scored one, two. Rian McMullen scored one, one. Michael Bradley continued his uh, good form. He scored three, and a few other lads uh, pitched in with scores as well. Would you be overly concerned if you were Antrim at, you know, conceding this sort of a scoreline you know you think in the last couple of years against Clare and Wexford and so on they're putting up really strong performances even Kilkenny in the last couple of years they're not losing by all that much and Darren Gleeson is maybe a bit frustrated at moral victories or whatever whereas this is you know it's a heavy loss yeah no you would be disappointed and um, the two Tipperary games Tipperary last year when they conceded seven goals uh, and this game as well you just on, on home soil and Corrigan Park has generally been a bit of a fortress for them they've taken a lot of teams down the stretch they took Kilkenny down the stretch there this year they obviously beat Clare there they beat Wexford there or they drew Wexford there I, I, there's they're definitely definitely going to be a bit of disappointment with it um, they'd most of their big guns out by all accounts you don't you can you can write it off or put a line through it but it's still there and it still happened and it's still but to, you know, can allow a little bit of doubt to creep in. Um, like wh what you're thinking, kind of what's Antrim's goal come Leinster? Obviously, to to try and get a win over Westmead and to try and potentially upset somebody else. Realistically, probably a Wexford or a Dublin. So Paul O'Sullivan makes a good point here. Funny how Cork top Division One A and it's only the league, so obviously that's the stronger side. Tip top a much weaker group and tip her back. Beware the false dawn. Do you know, within that, I think it's because there's a lot of players that Tipperary have there that have either done it underage, and there's plenty of one in All-Ireland just in, in 2019. I, I, I think it's easier to make a case for Tipperary. Also, the manager has taken Watford to an All-Ireland final and so on. It's easier to sort of say that about Tip than about Cork with a lot of players that we haven't seen before. Young, It's very difficult to say, oh, all these lads coming through from under 20s can transfer to senior level straight away. I don't. I think that's maybe why people are, are looking at it in those terms. I'll tell you why they're looking at it in these terms. Tipperary finished bottom of Munster last year without a point. Do you know what I mean? They were nowhere. Cork got out of Munster, uh, hammered Tipperary along the way, 
and we got to an All Ireland quarter final. It probably should have been in a semi final. So you have a team that's starting from the lowest of bases. So anything, the only way it was up, and Tipperary have gone up. Whereas Cork, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be downplaying the fact that you know they're they're after topping their group. They did, they did the same last year and maybe didn't kick on as much. But the point is that Tipperary are coming from the lowest of bases. So yeah, in comparison to last year, they definitely are back. Yeah, Darla Hans has always loved Shane's background. He's talking, I'd say, about that t shirt back there that you can get at our store. Uh, a Cork sympathizer at Hard Fernie would have to step up his game. Kilkenny jersey here, Kilkenny jersey there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Richard Hogan asks Mick, have Tipperary peaked too early? I wouldn't have thought so. I wouldn't have thought so. Um, You're a believer, aren't you? No, I think I, no, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in Liam Cahill, I have to say. And I'd be totally writing off. Uh, I'd be totally writing off. I, I'd put it this way: I'd be putting Waterford. I'd be putting some of Waterford's championship display. As I'd be putting it as much in the squad as it would be on cattle. I'd put it to that day, that way, given what they produced in the two and a half years previous to that. I thought there'd be a bouncing tip when Cattle and Bevins came in, and there definitely has been. And uh, yeah, I think they'll be consistent this year. They, you, they, you know, there won't be lads walking through their defence like they were last year. And I think they'll be hitting the net fairly regular, as has been emphasised already. So yeah, no, I think I, I think there's a fair shot at them getting out of Munster. All right. Porter Porter asks, "Will Connor Bow start in the championship? Has he done enough? He's used an awful lot on the bench, but he's coming in and scored. He came on against Dublin, scored a goal. Came on against Watford, scored a goal. Gets his chance here, scores a goal." I'm a huge, huge fan of Conor Bow, and I'd like to see him starting. But I actually don't know because it's so difficult to decide who, like, who's going to be the tip starting six forwards. I think Gerard O'Connor is going to start centre forward. I think Seamus Kennedy is going to st- look. Let's call a spade a spade. Seamus Kennedy spends a lot of his time uh, working in the middle third. The likes of Paddy Deegan, he's wearing number twelve and he's playing sweeper. There is teams don't play with six forwards anymore. So let's call a spade a spade here. But of those jerseys that are traditionally considered the forward jerseys, which are 10 up to 15, Jake Morris is definitely going to start. Uh, Jason Ford, I'd imagine, is definitely going to start. Noel McGrath is captain, but I don't know, will he be midfielder in the forwards? I think Alan Tynan is going to start for sure. Um, have I, have, who else will start? What do you think? Do you think Bonner will start? I think you have, I think you have nearly six names, don't you? Yeah. It's like John McGrath, he's obviously now pushing a little bit. Mark Kyo, he's shown like he's shown a, a nice bit in his form to be in that conversation. And I feel like I'm definitely forgetting somebody obvious as well. If Callum so, is back, obviously he'd be in the mix too. Um, yeah. if he's back, whether he will be or not, I'm, I'm not not fully sure. But there's a decent balance to that forward line, in fairness. Um, next week we'll tell a lot about Big time. It says one stop auto. And Darla Han says to Tallowman, who you know, Tallowman had just said that Cork need a bright ho- Brian Hogan. I'm not having that. We have the best centre back in the country, and he's 20, talking about Kieran Joyce. Uh, before you select uh, Kennedy wing forward, what's the defence for Tipperary? Says Adrian McGrath. Again, you know, when you're trying to ask me to name a team off the top of my head when I'm focusing on a million different uh, things this morning, it's very difficult. <clears throat> but assuming that Cahal Barrett is back, he's going to play there. Michael Breen will be there. I would imagine that Brian O'Mara will definitely be there. Ronan Maher, assuming he's fit, he'll also uh, start. Johnny Ryan cornerback? Johnny Ryan could also be in there, yeah, of course, as well. Um, Off the top of my head, it's very hard to remember because I don't have the full panel in front of me. Actually, I do have the the match programme from the game against Dublin there recently. Is there anyone that I'm forgetting that's pretty obvious? Is there anyone that uh, that you can think of? Uh, there's we're forgetting we're forgetting a wing back. I think um, I can't think of off the top of my head. Uh, go on. <clears throat> uh, well, um, Connor McCarthy is another person that could be in the mix. Um, o- Owen Connolly is another end of Heffernan. I don't know. Actually, it's a it's a tough one. But like, I think James Kennedy has even when he was named number seven against Watford, he was still playing the same role as the deep line in twelve, if you will. He wasn't man marking somebody at wing back. So I think like Dan McCormick has sometimes been used at wing back as well. He went back there to man mark Austin Gleeson the last day up until Gleeson got injured. Um, Adrian McGrath then saying still need a wing back. Was Hannon controlling games at when he was twenty? Is what Darla uh, Darla is saying in terms of uh, I suppose Kieran Joyce. He's doing really really well at his age. I suppose Hannon was up in the forward line. Yeah, 
Uh, I'm a big fan of Joyce, I have to say. I think he's chatting. I've been chatting someone in Cork down at the Cork Limerick game in Park Irene this year, and they were convinced that Ben O'Connor would be the long term centre back if he committed to, her, to the hurlers. But I don't know. I think I think Cork have their long term centre back in Joyce. Big, big fan of him. He makes, he makes, you know, he does. He makes big plays in games as well at really important times. Um, I just think he's also goes into contact with the arms up. He does a bit as well, yeah. Um, it's funny that Keen Kenny was mentioned as well. He's definitely one of the biggest culprits for that. I did, still didn't think he was. I thought I think Carrick Daly's very bad for it now. I have to say. I think he did it three or four times yesterday, uh, in that in that game. And he a lot of the time he's literally stopping. Keen Kenny does the same. They actually just stop and look for the free. Uh, and they're the one. They're the ones that are making the contact. They're the ones that are doing something to in initiate it. Uh, and I definitely think it's something that needs to be clamped down. And I'm sure it's something that referees will be talking about going into the championship. Because, we, you know, the last thing we want is that stopping the whole time and a free every time a fella runs into a fella, basically. Yeah, a uh, great result for Kildare at the weekend, says Flas. Sounded like a good battle in the second half at Offaly, which will come to... When it comes to, uh, when it, comes to it, will any of Tip and Cork beat Limerick? Have Tip any pace? Well... Whether Tip have pace or not, there's definitely some in the forward line. Tip won't be leaving the back line as exposed. So the opposition shouldn't get as many opportunities to just run straight up through the gaps in the middle. When it comes to it, will any of them beat Limerick this year? No. Um, yeah. If, if, if we're being honest, I don't think so. Uh, 